Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time. So today I'm going to be doing Computer Scientist Reacts to WWDC 2020. And if you don't know what either of those things are, I'll give you a little explanation. So some of you may not be aware, but I am a Computer Science PhD student. Um, I did a Computer Science undergraduate. I've worked in infrastructure and industry. And yes, this is basically my life, my living. WWDC 2020 is the midway year point in the Apple calendar. So for all of us Apple geeks, this is where we find out about things like um, iOS updates, macOS updates, all the, all the little software goodies that they throw our way. And on June 22nd, they did the virtual WWDC 2020 announcements and I thought I would share my reaction with you guys because there was some big, big changes coming our way for us Apple lovers. So with that said, let's jump right into it. Oh, no. <clears throat> okay, so I thought I would just react to the marketing vid for iOS 14 um because that obviously highlighted the main things they wanted to get across to us so um some of the things that jumped out to me were obviously the widgets on the home screen um again like i said very similar to android but i do think that apple managed to do it in a more seamless way than some of the android uis um i like the the big activity widget. I think that that's gonna be super useful, especially for people who have an Apple Watch and it's all syncing across. I don't know if I'd ever use the big photo widget. Um, I would just go into my photo library. I like that they have added the photo in photo to iPhone as well. On my iPad, if I'm having like a FaceTime call or I'm watching something on Netflix, I can um, open other apps and have that as a little screen in the corner. I like that that's coming to iPhone as well because it means that I can keep doing things while on a FaceTime call or doing things. So I think that's going to be super useful. Um, I don't think if I, I don't think I missed anything else. That seems to be the main brunt of that marketing vid. I do think they are useful features, but I don't know if we're not redesigning the wheel here. That'd be amazing. Let's dig in, starting with the home screen. Today's home screen worked great, but as we get more and more apps, we can end up with this. Lots and lots of pages. And we tend to forget what's beyond the first couple. Wouldn't it be great if there were a way to organize all of those apps without doing a thing? Well, this year we're doing just that with something called the App Library. Okay, so again, this is something they already have in Android, but it is use it's a useful feature and I'm glad they're bringing it to Apple because it means we can search our apps basically so they've got a suggestions box and are recently added at the top so i'm guessing that the suggestions is going to be something to do with siri and recommending what app you want and the recently added is going to obviously be the ones you've most recently downloaded and it looks like the others are just organized based on the type of apps they are so you've got like entertainment disney plus netflix in there and I'm not going to go through emojis because I think they're stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys, but no, like we're not talking about that. Groups. When you're talking to a group, sometimes there's so much going on. It can be hard to keep track of the conversation. So this year, we're going to help you bring order to the chaos. First, we're adding inline replies that let you reply directly to a specific message. You can view replies in the full conversation or you can view them as their own thread so you can focus in on the specific topic. To make it even more clear who a message was meant for, 
we're introducing mentions. With mentions, you can just type someone's name to direct a message to them. And now you have the ability to only be notified when you're mentioned in the group conversation. And check out the top of this conversation. One word response to that announcement, finally. We have an all new design for how groups appear. It lets you see all the members of your group where the most recently active people are shown largest. That's kind of cool. And for the first time ever, you can create a unique visual identity for your group by setting a group photo or customizing your group's look with an emoji. Inside the conversation, you see group members' photos around the image. Of course, it looks great as a pin. You know who's most recently commented in the group because their photo will appear around the outside. That's kind of cool. I like this. And that's what's coming to messages in iOS 14. All new pinned conversations, fun updates to Memoji, and powerful improvements to group. Can we get over this Memoji thing, please, guys? Which brings us to this year and our new release, iPad OS 14. Let's start with experience. This year, iPad OS delivers unique made for iPad designs mm. that take great advantage of the iPad's large multi-touch display. So basically they're just saying how they're bringing widgets to iPad as well. Um, they've made photos bigger. They've added like a side menu bar. So it's a little bit more like the experience on Mac to help you access things a bit different. So I guess if um, like an iPad Pro is your primary device and you don't have a Mac or a laptop, then they are making the experience a bit more like that. That is like basically it. <laughs> Uh, allowing you to talk to Siri. So the redesigned Siri is appearing in iPadOS as well. And uh, when you get an incoming call now, instead of it taking over your entire screen, it just comes down like a notification. So you can swipe up to dismiss it, but you can still see everything you were doing. Okay, this bit I thought was actually really good. So they've made some changes to the way that you can interact with your apple pencil and the drawings that you do so we'll look at this it just isn't as easy as with type text now we sometimes take it for granted but with type text it's so easy to select copy and paste into another document or even just make space for more text well this year we're going to make handwriting just as easy and just as powerful but that's not all our customers tell us that once they have an Apple Pencil in their hand, they don't want to put it away. So this year, we're bringing Scribble to iPad. Right into any text field, and it will automatically be converted to text. To show you all of this in action, I'd like to welcome Jenny Chen for a live demo. Go, Jenny. Thanks, Craig. I'm really excited to show you some of the great new features that we have for Apple Pencil and iPad OS this year. I can just start writing anywhere. And it's not just about text. I can also express myself with drawings or shapes, but sometimes you want that more professional cleaned up look. And so now when I draw a simple shape and pause at the end, it'll automatically convert to that ideal shape. And we're Love smart that. about it, retaining the same size and angle that you drew it at. In addition to shapes, we've also made huge improvements to our handwriting recognition. So now when I write, I can easily make a selection using the same gestures that I use for type text. I can double tap to select a word or double tap again to select a line. Thanks to our advanced on-device machine learning, you'll notice how we can select the handwriting while avoiding the drawings nearby. Now that I have the selection, I can easily change the color or move it around the document. It's also perfectly easy for me to make space for more room to write. We think that this will make note taking with Apple Pencil even better. So first, let's talk about the um, handwritten selection. That, from like a computer science point of view, is so hard. You're going to need to create a model, like a machine learning model, like she said, built-in machine learning, that basically learns how you write different letters so that it can recognise exactly what you've written. And if you think about handwriting and how, for each person, it's so individual, you know, they they literally do have machine learning built into the device so that it can recognize your personal handwriting every time that is not easy that is 
because they're going to have to figure out the different examples of your writing because you think imagine if you're writing something really quick it's a bit more squished and messy or like the handwriting that was the example there then was like very precise and very neat that is that is a lot of work to be able to do that that is not an easy computational task so i'm very impressed that that's that is sick that's really cool we can automatically detect what you write like phone numbers so i can make a phone call or addresses so i can look up directions we can use these features together to do even more with your handwriting let's say i wanted to use my handwriting in another app i can easily select what i want Tap the new copy as text from the callout bar and then paste it into an app like Pages and it's automatically converted to type text. We're really excited about these awesome new features. That is exciting. That is hard work. They have put in so much effort into like character recognition for individuals handwriting. So a model to learn that then recognizing the pattern of a phone number so it can automatically recognize that automatically recognizing the pattern of an address converting handwritten text into typed text without errors that that is cool that is some that is some really cool shit there Imagine you're writing your lecture notes and then you want to summarize them into a Word document. You just copy and paste your handwriting. Now into WatchOS. Please welcome Jules Arty. Workout. Thanks, Kevin. The workout app uses algorithms that are smartly tuned to track all aspects of your training. Nice. It's one of the most used apps on Apple Watch and we've continued to add support for new workout types every day. Sorry, can we just look at the guy running right down the bottom? Why is this me? <laughs> oh, and in no. Watch OS 7, we're adding dance. Dance is a total body workout that's great for your heart. It makes you more fit and flexible, and you're guaranteed to have fun. I cannot wait to try this with Just Dance. This is going to change my world. Tracking your sleep. To tell you about this, over to Vera Carr. Finally. Thanks, Kevin. Yes. There are many ways to look at sleep. Scores, advanced monitoring, or sleep cycle analysis. Okay, so currently to track sleep with an Apple Watch, you need a third party app, and a lot of them have a lot of in-app purchases, and it's so annoying, because I've been trying to track my sleep to get into a better sleep cycle recently with my Apple Watch. Um, and in order to get all the information you need, a majority of the apps ask you to pay some sort of fee, which is so annoying. So I'm so glad that Apple has finally integrated it just into the workings of the watch. It's the first watch to deliver automatic detection when you start washing your hands and sensing of how long you actually wash. Our approach here is using machine learning models to determine motion which appears to be hand washing and then use audio to confirm the sound of running water or squishing soap on your hands. During this, you'll get a little coaching to do a good job. You'll see a countdown along with haptics and sounds to make sure you wash as long as you're supposed to. This is pretty cool with everything that's going on in the world at the moment. Like, I think it's, it's good to reinforce the behavior and make sure people are washing their hands thoroughly, but also, I don't want people thinking that they need to go out and buy an Apple Watch in order to make sure they're washing their hands properly. Like, I'm sure you're okay. It, it is an interesting feature and unique, I think. I don't, I haven't heard of any other smartwatch that is um, incorporating something like that at the moment. Welcome back. Now, let's talk about some big changes coming to macOS. Since its introduction, macOS has revolutionized the experience of using a computer by combining incredible power with incredible ease of use. And it's loved by all different types of users, from families and students, to creative pros, business people, and of course, software developers. And this year, we're taking the macOS experience you love even further. But what should we call it? Well, if you're a student of macOS, you know this question can only be answered by Apple's legendary crack marketing team. Their drug-fueled, minibus-driven vision quests have yielded some great names and sadly spawned a host of imitators. The truth is, we can't responsibly continue to inadvertently lead our competition to copy these methods when they clearly can't handle the trip. So this year, 
We're leaving Earth. I'm not entirely aware what they're referencing in that. So if anyone knows what the hell that bit of this was, like, please let me know. Because I felt like their marketing went off the deep end with that. And they were like, yo, don't pick on our names. And then they went ahead and called it Big Sur. Like, oh, guys. But apart, apart from the naming conventions, Mac OS is gorge. A lot of the beginning part of the Mac OS bit is basically just saying we've changed some colours and changed the way things look and added some transparencies and stuff, um, which is beautiful because Mac OS is gorgeous. I love looking at it. I love using it. So it does look very clean, very sleek, um, but I don't think they're the most... This isn't like the big wow factor. They've added a control center in the top corner, which is, I, th I think is great. It's um, giving that link to the other devices in the Apple ecosystem. And it's also giving you that quick access to the different things that you need just at a click. Okay, this was a big announcement. So buckle yourselves in. And now it's time for a huge leap forward for the Mac. Because today is the day we're announcing that the Mac is transitioning to our own Apple Silicon. The first time I heard this, I thought they'd develop their own freaking polymer or they were gonna um, come out with like breast implants that connected to your apple watch or some shit i had no idea that they were referencing a chip so this is the first time where apple have named something and i actually had no idea what the hell they were referencing but it turns out that they've actually created their own cpu the first thing this will do is give the mac a whole new level of performance now when we talk about performance we have to talk about power because all systems built today are constrained by power consumption, thermals, or both. Among today's consumer systems, desktops deliver the highest performance but consume the most power. Notebooks trade off performance for lower power, making them portable. As you can see, normally to get more performance, you have to consume more power. When you take a closer look at this chart, you realize you want to operate in the upper left corner you want to deliver the highest performance at the lowest power consumption. And that's exactly where we want to take the Mac. So it makes sense. Like everything they're saying um, sounds like a dream world where you have loads and loads of power in a perform from a performance point of view, but you're not needing, you know, your battery's not going to die within half an hour. That's basically what they're saying is that Increased performance, lower power consumption. That's basically the goal. And we're bringing many other custom technologies, such as our video display and image processing engines that will help make the Mac better than ever before. They are really, really targeting gamers here. They're trying to say, look, um, because Macs are usually associated with video editing, photo editing, um, music editing, that type of thing, the more creative creative side of the suite uh, gamers tend to go with windows computers and then i think computer scientists and developers like me they kind of either have they have like a marmite relationship with apple they either love it or they hate it so they, they i think they're trying to broaden the niche with this chip they're trying to say look we are making sure that all these things that you would want in the other areas are also top tier. What does all of this mean for the Mac? First, we're designing a family of SOCs specifically for the Mac product line. Second, just like we did with the iPhone, iPad and watch, we're going to bring great technologies to the Mac. This will give the Mac a unique set of features and incredible performance. And third, we'll have a common architecture across all of our product lines, making it far easier for developers to write and optimize software for the entire Apple ecosystem. It'll make it a lot easier for them to develop things for the entire Apple ecosystem, but if this is going to result in all the things, all the common software across operating systems, across different chips, 
having to be redesigned to make sure it is compatible with this. So, you know, Adobe software, Word, Microsoft software, any anything that is common across platforms, things that are already working with like Intel chips, AMD are going to have to put in work to make sure they are compatible with this. So even though they are selling this dream and if it performs the way they say it does, then it's amazing but it is going to cause a massive, like, roll-on effect. And I'm happy to say we have all of our own Apple apps, including our most demanding Pro apps, like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, up and running as... So like I've just said, they've had to redesign all of their Apple apps to make sure that they are compatible with Apple Silicon. So moving, I think, what's currently in uh, Max's Intel chips so they have obviously put like i'm i expected them to if i could think of it like apple probably can um they've obviously put a lot of work into making sure that they will be continuing compatibility across processors so you know if you have a mac running on an intel processor you're not all of a sudden not going to be able to work with any of the Apple apps, they're going to try and ensure that they are compatible across Apple Silicon and Intel. This is a system built to support early development using the same A12Z processor currently shipping in iPad Pro. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a confession to make. This isn't the first time you've seen Mac OS running here. In fact, this is the same Mac that Beth and I used to demo all the new Big Sur features earlier. And as you saw earlier, we've updated all of our Apple apps and they're running great. Of course, a big part of the Mac experience is third party apps. And we've been working with our friends at Microsoft and they already have Office up and running natively on our new Macs. Let's take a look at Word. It runs great. Scrolling is super smooth. Everything you do is just super responsive. Next, let's check out that was Excel. Nice. Just as you'd expect, complex sheets and elements like this map all update instantly. And next, let's take a look at PowerPoint. It's using metal for rendering and it performs great. Mm. For instance, check out how I can see all the layers of my slide in 3D. The animation is perfectly fluid. Oh! We've also been working closely with our friends at a... Oh. Oh. That was that was hot like i am such an excel and powerpoint geek like when i was younger i used to make powerpoints for my mom and dad if i wanted something to like justify so if i needed a new phone i'd do like a powerpoint of different options how much things cost then i do a spreadsheet to work out different payment plans so i could pay them back things like that and that 3d layering was yeah that did things to me will be to bring creative cloud to our new Macs. Here's Lightroom running native on Apple Silicon. Navigating large libraries of DNG images is super fast. And all of Lightroom's editing controls are available right here. Now let's apply an adjustment to this image. Well, that's much better. And we can apply that same edit to all of these images in a single step. Oh, that great. rendered so quickly. Next, let me show you the app I know many of you want to see, Photoshop. Here's a five gigabyte Photoshop file by photographer Stephen Wilk. Jesus. Now, this is a heavy duty document with lots of layers. Now, let's add one more bird in there. Not totally comfortable with the level of social distancing, but let's keep <laughs> going. And let's check out how smooth the animation is as I zoom out. Wow. That is a five gig file and it is, there is no, no struggle. I wonder what the rest of the specs are on this computer though, other than just the different processor, because you know, you could be, I know the processor does a lot of the heavy lifting, but you can't just make out that, it's the be all and end all, you know? 
if you just put this processor in with like <laughs> i know that they don't do a, as low a spec as like four gig of ram or other things like that but you know this is probably the highest spec mac you could get it's an imac as well right he's using so if they're using their apple silicon and all of the other top tier specs then it's not as representative like it's impressive and i guess if you're somebody who's doing this type of editing you probably will have the more intense specs on your machine but that's just something to keep in mind beautiful Finally, let's turn to one of our most sophisticated apps, Final Cut Pro. Here it is running on Apple Silicon for the first time. Let's play back some 4K video. As you can see, playback is super smooth and all your filters are here and you can apply them in real time. Let's try some color correction. And I can even add animated titles and lens flare all during live playback that is smooth. and final cut takes advantage of the unique capabilities of the apple neural engine with a new feature that analyzes video and intelligently crops it to keep the most important action in the frame but that's not all final cut fully exploits the system's multi-core architecture to let us play back not just one or two but three streams of full resolution 4k pro res all on an a12z processor wow amazing so that's a first look at you. That is pretty impressive, not gonna lie. Universal apps on Apple Silicon. So like it's showing now, these updates are coming in the fall. So in the autumn for us UK and non-American people. And I enjoyed that thoroughly. Um, let's just summarize quickly. So basically <laughs> from an iOS perspective, we're getting a lot of Android updates done impeccably. It looks beautiful. I think it's going to add customization options for the people who want to, but it's not taken away from the simplicity and the beauty that is iOS anyway. From an iPad perspective, we have got all that amazing stuff to do with um, handwritten recognition, which is just so impressive you guys like from a computing point of view it's so impressive so that i'm really looking forward to trying that out on my ipad because i do take a lot of handwritten notes for uni um apple silicon like <laughs> whew. it's it's like how um apple have their lightning chargers and everything like that they're basically it's like a big f you to generalization they don't want what everyone else has they want everything to be apple-fied and i think in a lot of cases that does work out i will be interested to see how these things turn out with apple silicon and if the performance is as good as this presentation leads us all to believe if they can get that high performance with the lower power consumption it could be it could be very interesting i hope there's no like major ongoing compatibility issues but it does seem to look like they it does seem like they've put a lot of thought into that and working it out the watch updates i'm super looking forward to i'm looking forward to having dancing tracking because i've just got just dance like i said the sleep tracking why is it taking this long but i'm looking forward to it and the hand washing even though i feel like it's kind of <laughs> maybe um trying to commercialize and take advantage of the situation that's going on in the world i do see the benefits of having that but like i said earlier do not think you can't wash your hands without an apple watch guys you'll be okay generally a very exciting presentation the marketing is always spot on from apple it's always an enjoyable experience i'm looking forward to these updates i will sign up to the beta if i can so i can try them out um, and if you guys have enjoyed this video, let me know. And if you want me to share more things like this, I would love to, because obviously this is something that I'm super passionate about. It's what I do day to day, not like Apple. Oh my God, I'd love to work for Apple. I think I'd die. I'm actually like drooling. But like computers, computer science, this is what I do. It's obviously something I'm passionate about. So if you've liked this video, uh, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, leave me any comments down below.
love to get a conversation going on this and let me know if you'd like more computer scientist reacts videos in the future so that's it from me today guys and i'll see you in the next one love ya